Hi everybody, my name is Carissa and you can find me on my blog at Inky Fairy Designs as well as my YouTube channel by the same name. Today I am with WOW and I am sharing with you this super adorable project for Valentine's Day and I'm just going to show you how I use my embossing powders to make that cute card. To start off we're going to do a little bit of embossing through a stencil and um, the way I do that is I cut down my card panel to the size that I want it to be, which is um, four, and a half, four and a quarter by five and a half. I, I love the standard A2 size cards. That's what I generally create on. Um, here I'm placing the stencil trying to decide what orientation I wanted to do. I, I thought it would be cute diagonal, but then I decided, nope, just going to keep it straight. Lined it up on my mat um, and I'm placing some purple tape both behind my cardstock and to make sure the stencil stays in place so that while I am sponging onto my cardstock, it's not going to move. I'm taking a very inexpensive dollar store uh, makeup sponge and I'm picking up that ink and just um, sponging it through the stencil much like I would do with paint or ink or any other medium. I just want to make sure that all of that embossing ink gets through my stencil so that um, I can emboss those little hearts perfectly. Once I'm happy with that I will go ahead and um, get my embossing powder out. I decided to use Medellin Himalayan Musk because I'm making this card for my husband and his favorite color is maroon and this color has that maroon vibe to it. It's also not a glitter or mixed embossing powder. It is just that color. It's opaque, kind of like has a pearlescent uh, finish to it, um, but it just was the perfect shade to use. So I'm sprinkling that over my entire card panel, and you can see I have a coffee filter underneath it to catch any excess. I use a coffee filter or even just a piece of copy paper just so that we don't waste any of that, and we can pour it right back into the jar where it came from and use it for our next project. So once I have that all put away and secured, because we don't want to tip it over, which is known to happen. I'm going to make sure my heat tool is all nice and warm before I bring it to my paper. And you can see that I will um, heat the back side of my cardstock first, just get it all nice and even, and then I'll go a little bit slower over the actual embossed areas on the front and make sure um, they all melt nice and evenly. Uh, so I will do that through the, in, you know, for the whole card. And you can see where it's kind of dull and matte. Um, that's the embossing powder before it has melted into this beautiful pearl shimmery. Oh, just so good. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to color my images. I'm using this adorable stamp by Waffle Flower. I just love the two bunnies. And um, so I'm going to kind of make them like a boy bunny and a girl bunny. And I love the storybook kind of look of these stamps. So I decided to um, stamp them and emboss them with this rose gold um, embossing powder because I didn't want the stark black lines to kind of, um, I didn't want to have that harsh contrast with the watercoloring that I plan to do. So again, I'm going to... Um, heat embossed from the back and then here I slowed it down just a bit so you can see how I just kind of linger in the little areas until it starts to melt and then I move on to the rest of the images. Once those are all um, embossed and cooled down I can start my watercoloring. I am stamping and watercoloring on Fabriano Artistico Bright Right. 140 pound watercolor paper. It is the hot press, so it's a nice, smooth watercolor paper. I slowed down just the one bunny for you so you can see um, how my watercoloring is in real time. So I just um, bring, I'm actually doing like a dry, wet on dry technique, which uh, just means that when I first bring my paint to the paper, it's dry. And then I will rinse off my brush and um, smooth or spread out that color to the rest of the image, leaving with that darkest area on one side to give a little bit of a shadow and dimension, and then just drawing out the rest um, 
to the image, leaving a little bit of white space. I like to leave white space as my highlights. Um, I don't generally color in all of my images, and um, I usually just do one layer. So I will, you know, play around with it, add more paint, um, you know, smooth it around, clean off my brush, pick up some of that. Like right here, I'm, I have a dry brush I'm picking up because there was way too much water and pigment there. And I'm just using the dry brush to remove that. And then once I'm happy, I can move on to the other bunny. I just used pretty much one color on the on the bunny on the the gray bunny on the left. I did use two colors because I wanted to have a little bit more depth to it. But the bunny on the right, I just used one color, and you can see how you can get a lot of variation just by using watercolors. I did use their tails in like the opposite colors so that it just ties it all in together and makes it cohesive. Added a little bit of shading with blue to the cups just to give them the essence of being light. And now once they're all colored, I can fussy cut them out. Um, they do have matching dies for a lot of stamps nowadays um, that you can purchase separately, but I prefer to just buy stamps. <laughs> if I wanna do fussy cutting, it really doesn't take that long. And um, I have control over how thick or thin I want those outlines to be. So once I um, got the bunnies all colored and I put them on that backing, um, that background that I had created, I thought mm, I needed, I needed a little bit more to it. I needed to create some grounding for them. They just kind of looked like they were floating there on this heart background. So I decided to bring in some distress inks to do some blending. One of the great things that I love about embossing is that it acts as a resist to the ink that you place on top. So um, it actually works in your benefit to do the embossing first, even though this was not my plan, because Distress inks, as you know, are water reactive. They're very juicy inks, and you would have to really wait for that um, very inked blended background to dry completely before embossing on top of it. And um, this way, I already have my embossing done. I can do that beautiful ink blending. I take a paper towel, wipe off the embossing. You can see it looks beautiful just as it was before. I die cut that with just a simple stitch rectangle. Uh, die and now I'm going to place my bunnies on the panel and I wanted to add just a little bit of grounding or shading underneath them um, so that they you know appear to be on that background and not just kind of floating there in space so I'm adding just a little bit of that ground espresso underneath and blending it out so now I'm taking my or I'm making my um, card base out of um, just some plain white paper and uh, it is scored at five and a half so that I get the four and a quarter by five and a half card base for my panel there and now I'm just going to take some foam adhesive and place it on the back of my bunnies and pop them up on the background where I um, added that shadow and then I'm just going to take some liquid adhesive and add those little accessories to identify my little girl bunny and then their drinking coffee together because I love coffee. My husband loves coffee and that, that is like I love the weekends because um, I make him a cup of coffee and we just kind of chill out in the morning while the kids are getting up before we have to start our day. So I just love how this card came together. Uh, for the sentiment, I just decided to stamp a simple uh, greeting from that same stamp set. It says, love you, on the same background paper as my blended background. Um, it's kind of like this sparkly paper by Sweet Sentiment. It really is beautiful and um, it embosses and blends really nicely. So here I'm using um, a powder tool just to make sure that with a intricate kind of small detail sentiment, I really don't want any excess powders floating around. So I just kind of treat that with that powder and then I'll sprinkle on um, the same embossing powder, uh, metaline Himalayan musk as I use for the heart in the background just to kind of create that cohesive look uh, for my card. 
So I'm just going to spread that around, sprinkle it, make sure it's nice and evenly distributed. Then I'll heat it from the back like I always do, and then from the front while well, it melts. And it's just so pretty. So I really, I did not use a die cut or anything. I just cut it with my scissors around the words. And it's it's like beautifully imperfect. Like I just, sometimes I just want quick. I don't need it to be perfect. And um, it takes more time to kind of find a die that's going to work for that than just cutting around the sentiment and um, doing a little ink blend, you know, like edging the ink, the edges with some ink to give it a little bit of dimension and then popping it. And I think it really fits with the entire like whimsical feel of the stamp and the background and the watercoloring to have that hand cut sentiment on top. So here's a little close up of my card. I hope you enjoyed this video. I am so excited to be part of the WOW Embossing uh, Creative Team for 2020. And I can't wait to share more projects with you over the year. We love to see what you are creating as well. So be sure to tag us um, hashtag wow embossing powder and um, at wow embossing you can also tag me at inky fairy designs on Instagram I would love to see what you're creating if you are inspired by my card or any of the cards that you see here on our YouTube channel or our blog please do that I would love to come give you some love that's it for me. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to this channel so that you can see more great content like this one. And until next time, do something you love.